Steph Curry's leadership is not in question. If you watch this page, you know, I don't typically talk about, you know, these kind of drama filled topics because I don't know, I just feel like there are more positive things to focus on. But this is a headline that has been circulating for a while and is now recirculating. And I just feel like I want to speak my opinion on this because this is probably, in my opinion, one of the most ridiculous headlines I have seen. And we've seen some pretty ridiculous headlines. And I'm not calling anybody out in particular. You know, people are entitled to their opinion and that is fine. But in my opinion, it is ridiculous that people are questioning his leadership. So where this is stemming from is, you know, the whole Dream on Green situation throughout the year. This started to be a topic, you know, earlier on in the season. And now that Draymond just got, you know, kicked out of the last game against the Magic, the topic is recirculating. So first let's talk about how Steph Curry has been a leader in so many ways that nobody gives him credit for. In the Steph Curry era, and I'm not saying he did it alone, of course, Draymond and Klay Thompson and Iguodala and Sean Livingston, all these players, and obviously Kevin Durant, were integral parts of the dynasty. Like, I am in no way, shape, or form diminishing any of their contributions because they were super important to the dynasty. But I'm just trying to highlight what Steph has done. Because without Steph Curry, just like you could say without Draymond, there's not four championships. Without Klay Thompson, there's not four championships. Without Steph Curry, there is not four championship banners. In the Steph Curry era, or rather, I guess you could say in the dynasty era, the first time they went to the finals was in 2015 and they just won their last ring in 2022. So in an eight year span, they went to the finals six times. And if we're being honest, two of those years, you know, Clay was out with his ACL and Achilles. So they really, you know, didn't have their full roster in order to make a run. But either way, in eight years, they went to the finals six years and won four of those. And in 2019, you know, a lot of people would believe, like I feel 99.9% .9 confident, the Warriors would have won if Kevin Durant wasn't hurt and Klay Thompson didn't get hurt, but that's neither here nor there at this point. You don't win four championships if you're not a good leader. So just from a winning aspect, he's a leader because you don't win if you don't lead your team in some way, shape, or form. He leads by example. So that is my next point. Do you know what it's like to be in the Warriors practices? Well, I don't personally <laughs> because I've never been in them either, but we have heard plenty of, you know, you know, people talk about how the organization has such a great culture because it starts with Steph Curry, because he is a joy to play basketball with. He has so much fun playing. So they have practices and they're having fun. Like they're literally having fun at practices. Again, I'm not there, so I can't confirm that, but we've heard this. Creating an environment that is fun, stress-free, well, you know, sort of stress-free, <laughs> as much stress-free stress -free as it could be, and also an environment where he is so unselfish that he allows other players to shine is part of leadership. I know people don't think it is, but to be a good leader, you have to try to let other people shine and maximize their talents. And he allows other people to do that because he is unselfish. Another thing that we have heard so many times is about his conditioning. So many people, especially nowadays, are saying he is the best conditioned athlete in the entire league. And that even includes LeBron, who we know LeBron is LeBron. And he takes conditioning seriously. On the Paul George podcast, I heard he was talking about, I think it was when Clay was on the podcast, or Draymond, I forget which one, but how players will go to work out with Steph and 10 minutes in, they'll tap out because it's just too intense. And that just speaks to how hard he works. And we've heard like, in practice, he's always trying to, you know, win, like whatever kind of drill they're doing. So the fact that he works so hard is also part of leadership because everybody else on the team has no reason to slack off because your best player who is, you know, doing the most on the court and stuff like that, if you want to say it like that, I don't even know how to say doing the most on the court, but like who has the biggest responsibility in terms of scoring and all the attention he draws and all that stuff. And yet he is still working like the hardest in practice. So that's leading by example as well, because everybody else is like, okay, he is working super hard. So we have to as well. So again, he does all these things, but he's not going to ever get credit for it. And he's not the only player, obviously, who ever, you know, led by example. Like, I'm not saying he is. I'm just saying 
just because he's not the most vocal person ever does not mean he is not a leader. Because all the things I just said, you don't get four rings if you're not a leader. But that's one part. Now let's talk about the Draymond part, which is the part that everyone's talking about with his leadership in question. I just wanted to highlight some of the other things that he does, and there's other things he does as well, but just to put it in perspective, that there's a lot of things that he does that we don't ever talk about. In terms of the Draymond Green thing, this is why I think it's ridiculous. Because how is Steph Curry supposed to control another person's actions? You don't think that Steph Curry, since he's been with Draymond, since Draymond has entered the league, I believe Draymond was drafted in 2012. So 12 years that they've been together. You don't think Steph Curry and Draymond Green have had a ton of conversations behind the scenes and Steph probably said to him like, hey, like we really need you on the court. We can't have you, you know, getting thrown out. And Draymond's probably said, you're right. Like that conversation has probably happened a bunch of times. Just because Steph is not going to publicly criticize his teammate who is, you know, we've heard that they're super close and stuff like that, does not mean they're not having conversations behind closed doors. They most definitely, like, again, I'm not there, but I'm like 99.99999% positive that they've had that conversation a time or two. At the end of the day, though, he cannot control somebody else. He obviously has had conversations with him. I'm sure other players in the organization have had conversations with him. But he cannot control Draymond. Like, you can't control another person. It doesn't work, and people try to do it all the time in everyday world, you know, not even in basketball. People try to control other people, and usually it doesn't work. You can't control people. Like, they're going to do what they want to do. And I'm not saying Draymond wants to get thrown out of games. What I'm saying is, it's, it's not his fault. Like, what do you want him to do? If he's had the conversations with Draymond, which I'm sure he has... Like, what else do you want him to do? What is there extra that he can do? So again, everyone is entitled to their opinion. If they really think Steph Curry is not a good leader because of the Draymond situation, that's their opinion. I don't agree with it, but I just think it's kind of crazy that we're nitpicking here. Like, we are literally nitpicking at Steph Curry. Is he perfect? Obviously not. Nobody is perfect. But we're trying to question his leadership because of something that he literally cannot control. He can have as many conversations as he wants, but he cannot control somebody. And we're just looking for a way to, I don't know. I just, I think it's kind of crazy, but that's my opinion. So let me know in the comments down below what you think about this whole situation of Steph Curry's leadership being in question. Do you agree with people saying that he is not, you know, being a good enough leader or do you disagree? because I disagree. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below.